Hello everyone, welcome, welcome. My name's Charlie, and today I'm gonna be playing my first 100 days in Cult of the Lamb. Over the years, many cults have begun in my community as a result of my shenanigans. The bean cult, Pam Cartism, the spaghetti cult, like I've seen it all. But today we will be starting our greatest cult yet. So without further ado, let's just get into it. My journey as a cult leader did not start well. Hands shackled, I walked down a long path toward the altar for my sacrifice, where I met Leshy, Heket, Kalamar, and Shimura. And you may be wondering, Charlie, what's a cute little lamb like you doing getting executed? Well, long story short, there was a prophecy that a lamb like me would overthrow the four bishops. So naturally, they killed every single lamb, and I was the only one left in the entire world. Okay, back to my execution. Okay, well, here I go. But as the executioner's axe swung down, I was suddenly transported to this foggy purgatory where I met the one who waits, and he offered me a pretty great deal. I will give you life again, but at a price. All I ask is for you to start a cult in my name. Do you have a deal? Yes? Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Upon agreeing, I received a very cool hat and exacted my revenge. You're idiots. All of you are idiots. Now I have my hat and you're all gonna die. I slashed my way out and quickly met Ratao, a guide who was once a vessel like me. He promised me escape was up ahead, so I continued through the dungeon, killing these little goobers and gathering coins until I reached a room where this poor hedgehog was about to be sacrificed. Who interrupts our ritual and trespasses on sacred ground? A me. I had just been saved from ritual sacrifice, and it only felt right to extend the good favor, so I fought off the hedgehog's captors and rescued the poor guy, which really entailed sending him through this wormhole. And finally, I reached the grounds where I'd be starting my cult and introduced myself to the hedgehog who I named Beefaroni, our our first cult follower. Hello, uh, welcome. I gave him a little t-shirt and we chopped down some trees together in preparation for a cooking fire. And in the process, I also realized you could pick berries, which is honestly one of my favorite things to do in video games. I am actually overjoyed. After gathering all the stone and wood needed, I crafted up the cooking fire. All the berries I've been picking actually came in handy as I put together a basic berry bowl. And as Beefaroni enjoyed their breakfast, I spoke with Ritao. He told me that I'd need to build a shrine, which if you know me, I was gonna do anyway. But I was still short on money and new recruits, so I went on my first real crusade into the lands of the old faith. With Beefaroni's help, we opened the gate to Darkwood, and when I entered, I was given a little sword, which I happily accepted. Soon, I came face to face with Leshy, ruler of the Darkwood and the youngest bishop of the old faith. Turn tail and run, little lamb. All right, you don't have to tell me twice. I continued on through the dungeon, taking a bit of damage in the first area, but it generally went off without a hitch, and eventually, I met Claw Neck, this very nice traffic cone who offered me power-ups. Narrowly completing the next area with only one heart, I realized I could also collect natural resources like grass in the rooms. Well, I'm gonna destroy everything then. After a sword upgrade and another visit with Claw Neck, I entered a battle arena where I met this little fella, who Leshy then turned into, um, whatever this thing is. Oh! Oh my god! Amduzius didn't prove to be much of a challenge, and after defeating them, they turned back into their normal self. And he's so cute! I tossed him into the wormhole and then took my cash prize, returning to my cult where I indoctrinated Amduzius and renamed them Bisquick. Welcome to the cult, my pancake brother. Assigning them to mine some stone. In my crusade, I'd gathered more than enough gold to build my shrine, and with the help of Beefaroni and Bisquick, I did just that. With the shrine built, I'd be able to have followers worship me to gain devotion, which would be crucial for unlocking new buildings and upgrades. After the shrine was completed, a new little guy randomly popped through the wormhole and asked me to convert him. I will do so gladly, Sonic. I assigned him to worship duty, and just like that, we already had quite the bustling community. And using Sonic's devotion, I was able to unlock the temple. Beefaroni and Bisquick were really slacking though, and I needed materials to build it, so I got to work collecting some and figured if I needed stone, I might as well mine the biggest one I can find. This is gonna take forever. I don't know why I committed to this. This is gonna seem so fast for you, but in reality, I've been sitting here for like two minutes. And after a lot of waiting, 10 stone, 10 stone from that, just 10. You're kidding. I was there for like two and a half minutes. <gasps> a bee, there's a bee. Join my cult, become a follower. Please, 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 please. 
Oh, man. You see, it's all a metaphor. I am me hitting a rock for three minutes straight, and the bee represents my sanity as it slowly leaves my grasp. Eventually, I got all the materials I needed to build the temple and began construction. Oh, the gang's all here. And soon enough, the temple was complete. This would be our meeting place for sermons, funerals, indoctrination, and other important events for maintaining faith in the cult. With that handled, I turned my attention to our next big problem, which was starvation. The berry bowl worked out so well earlier that I decided to unlock the farm plots and plant some berry bushes for a more sustainable food source. Add fertilizer? I don't have any poop. Oh man, tell me I'm not using the poop of my followers. All right, on that note, let's go make a sermon, I suppose. Loyal followers, I have gathered you here today to uh, to show you the power of Chef Boyardee. It was an excellent and educational first sermon, if you ask me. Ritao even commended me for my great delivery and general cult leader capabilities and recommended that I look for commandment stone fragments to declare doctrines. With these, I'd be able to strengthen my cult following and expand the community. Before venturing back into the lands of the old faith to look for some, I cooked up some more berry bowls for my wonderful followers. At this point, I felt like I was starting to get the hang of things, and while exploring, Ritao told me that the one who waits was pleased with my progress so far. As a reward, I was given a new ranged attack ability. That is so sick. With my cool new power, I breezed through the next two rooms before reaching a crossroad. I had the choice between a shop or another follower. My curiosity eventually took over and I met Fornius for the first time, who sold me our first stone command fragment as well as a tarot card that increased my attack. As day two began, I was still hacking my way through the dungeon and quickly stumbled across this fella named Haro. They offered me several commandment fragments and using them, I was able to complete my first full stone tablet, which would allow us to declare our first cult doctrine. Excited to get back home, I easily made my way through the next few rooms. Oh no, no. During which I took absolutely no damage whatsoever. And barely clinging onto one heart, I entered the boss battle with Valifar, a formidable fireball shooting opponent. I have a half a heart and I'm gonna die. I'm super dead right now. I oh, died. And just like that, I was martyred. After a quick chit chat with the one who waits, who was actually quite encouraging and supportive, I returned to the living world only to find a little poopy on the floor for me to clean up. I'm sure that's just a one-off thing. With the devotion that had pooled while I was gone, I decided to unlock sleeping bags so that Beefaroni, Bisquick, and Sonic wouldn't have to sleep on the ground anymore. I can't have them sleep deprived. I need them well rested to worship me tomorrow. I got the sleeping bag construction going and then checked in on all my cultists. Where is Beefaroni? I'm scared. <gasps> Poop! Absolutely not. Not in my cult. With all my followers accounted for and their little turds cleaned up, I headed to the temple because as a reward for completing our first commandment stone, we'd unlock the ability to perform rituals. Bonfire ritual. Dance around the flame to increase the cult's faith. That is so culty. I love it. The bonfire would have to wait though, because as Bertau explained to me, I would need the literal bones of my enemies to host rituals. So I made a note to keep an eye out for them on future crusades. I left the temple that night confident in my leadership skills until I saw Bisquick and Sonic just straight up collapse. Oh, oh, uh, are you guys good? Does Beefaroni get to be- <gasps> Beefaroni has the sleeping bag! I love that. All right, I'm not the kind of leader to show favoritism, but I would die for Beefaroni and he is my favorite cultist. I mean, he was my first follower and I did feel bad the others had to sleep on the ground, but that's just the way it had to be for now. We should probably make sleeping bags for the other people too, but I don't have money, so I'm gonna have to go back out and continue exploring. This time, as I made my way through Darkwood, I made sure to collect any bones I came across and eventually bumped into a blacksmith named Kudai. Oh my, this feels like I'm about to go into a massive boss fight. Kudai essentially offered a selection of weapons that I could choose from if I wanted to swap out the ones I'd collected in the dungeon. Of course, I chose my trusty cleaver axe and once again entered the battle with Valifar, but this time I was determined to win. Just like before, I began with one heart, so I was forced to expertly dodge their attacks, which luckily wasn't an issue because I am very talented. Oh my god, I rolled right into that one. Over time, I managed to get Valifar down to less than a quarter health, but with only half a heart, I was no match. I am going to lose my mind. It was a crushing blow, to say the least. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm trying. What am I supposed to tell Beefaroni? That I died to Valifar twice? I can't tell Beefaroni that. But much like the one who waits, Beefaroni was a forgiving soul. And when I spoke with them upon returning, I realized that our cult still needed a name. I deliberated for a while, eventually settling on Cult Boyardee. Oh my god. The... <laughs> 
bold text. That's insane. Given my defeat to Valifar, I noticed a distinct lack of faith from my followers and decided to deliver another sermon. Hello, everyone. I would just like to remind you that without me, you're nothing. This allowed me to upgrade the Bane class of weapons, but the cult's faith remained the same, so in desperation, I called for our first bonfire. Everybody, come on, come on. Chef Boyardi, beefaroni. Spaghetti -o. And everyone was much happier after that. After seeing the growth of Colt Boy RD and my dedication as a leader, Ratau told me that with nothing left to teach, he would be retiring for good and returning to his home, the Lonely Shack. Touched by Ratau's kind words, I felt even more motivated and prepared my cultists a celebratory lunch. My followers are no longer starving. I wasn't honestly aware that they were in the first place, so oops. With the devotion my followers had produced, I managed to unlock the farming bundle, which allowed me to build our first farming station so cultists could plant and water our crops. And I mean, after such a long day, I decided to travel to Ratau's shack and check it out, getting myself caught up in a late night game of knuckle bones. I had no idea how this dice game worked. It was like Yahtzee, but you could attack your opponent's dice? But Ratau must really suck at this game because somehow I won, which was a surprise to us all. By the time our game ended, I realized it was already the morning of our fifth day, so I rushed home to cook everyone some breakfast. Everybody get your num nums, come on. Now that we'd made the farming station, I wanted to start building up the farm to cook better meals for everyone, so I headed into the dungeon once again on the hunt for money to buy a seed silo. I was also desperate to get some new followers too, and ended up saving this little giraffe before confronting Valifar for the third time. Okay, Valifar. Oh, oh, you're poisoned. What a loser. Only losers get poisoned. <laughs> it was a tense battle, and although I was reduced to one heart, I kept my composure like the strong-willed leader that I was. I but eventually... Just die! Oh, thank goodness. I bested Valifar, earning myself another new follower. You get in the portal. I triumphantly returned home with two new followers in my care, and with the addition of SpaghettiO, our cult had reached cult level two. Right afterward, I indoctrinated Valifar and tried to name them Big Stupid Idiot, but quickly realized they were actually a god tier follower. 15% easier to level up and generates devotion 15% faster. Given the usefulness, I swallowed my pride and instead named them Ravioli. I will not hold your past against you. I do not have bad blood. Go rest. Lay your head. Lay your head, Ravioli. Just lay down. Good night, my sweet baby. With the money I'd gotten from my most recent expedition, I built the cult a new seed silo. I was also able to afford three more sleeping bags, which was fantastic news since Beefaroni was still the only one with a bed. Literally, everyone else just collapses onto the ground as soon as the sun sets. As I completed some farming chores on the morning of day seven, Bisquick approached me with... An interesting request. Leader, it would be so funny if we pulled some hilarious pranks on Sonic. They are a real picky eater, so let's make them eat poop? Bisquick, how could you ask that of me? Okay, I'll do it. I didn't even know how to prepare the poop, but luckily there was a recipe? I made everyone else some normal meals and served up breakfast. I'll just cook all this for everybody else. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, don't eat the bowl of poo. Wait, 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 wait. Sonic specifically needs to eat the bowl of poo. Oh god. Oh, thank god, it's Sonic. Excuse me, leader. I just wanted to say that I love you. I'm so sorry I fed you poop. The poop prank paid off, though, because when I spoke with Bisquick again, they commended me for my great sense of humor and gave me a commandment fragment for pulling off the prank. And despite my shenanigans that morning, there was a bunch of devotion at my shrine, which I used to unlock the next tier of shelters, because my followers deserve the world. Or at least, like, basic human necessities like shelter. We were slowly making upgrades and growing our following, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, more followers meant more poop, and the little poopies everywhere were starting to become our biggest problem. How much devotion do we need to make a bathroom around here? This is getting really unsanitary. I'm sure if I can indoctrinate you, I can potty train you. There wasn't really anything I could do except constantly clean it up, so I did the next best thing and started to build some decorations to distract from how unsightly it was. Although the lanterns only make the poop more visible, they're just so pretty, I'll allow it. With everyone tucked in bed and the dawn of day 8 approaching, I headed back into Darkwood on the quest to gain more followers, and the opportunity to do that came soon enough. Oh, it's a little horse. I fended off the hooded figures and freed the little guy, continuing on through the dungeon. I'll tell you what though, bumping into three of the four bishops was not what I expected when I woke up that morning, and they were extremely determined to get rid of me. But I, being the brave and fearless cult leader that I am, fought off their minions with courage, poise, and grace. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, they did it, they killed me, they killed me. I was so close to death as I entered the final final battle with Barbados, I knew I was Barbados. <laughs>
Okay. Like, what's a little lamby like me gonna do against this absolute unit? But to my surprise, Barbados was an easy boss. I dodged their little acid spittle with ease, and using the poison effect from my upgraded Bane weapon, I eventually defeated them, sending the little guy into the void to join their new friends. As a reward for my efforts, I grabbed some berry bush seeds, since food was still a scarce commodity in Colt Boy RD. And on my way home, I met up with the big boss himself. Throughout our exchange, the one who waits urged me to exploit the faith of my followers, to use them to to my advantage and to do unspeakable things to them, which may or may not mean feeding them poop. But these weren't just my followers, they were my little babies, and I couldn't imagine doing that, so I pushed the thought to the back of my head. With Pringle and Execute now welcomed into the cult and more mouths to feed, I crafted a scarecrow and a couple more farm plots to increase our agricultural output. But as I was doing so, oh my gosh, you're hungry, aren't you? I'm so sorry, I forgot about cooking. One, two, three, four. How many are there of you? Oh my god, here's your din dins. Come on, everybody. Buddy. Uh, guys, I made you dinner. For some reason, I noticed the next day that Bisquick was exhausted, probably not at all related to a lack of food in any way. I gave them a little blessing and then continued working on upgrading the shelters while they napped. While I was shoveling poop and vomit afterward, which is <laughs> apparently just a thing I do now, I found a necklace that increases the resources a follower can collect. Did somebody just throw that up? Which of you just threw up a necklace? I'm so confused. I decided that, of course, Beefaroni deserved the new vomit necklace. But as I was giving it to him, he brought up some troubling news. Leader, skeptics, and heretics have made their way into our cult. Should we welcome them? I'm scared that this is gonna like, like I don't want Beefaroni to hate me, but that's gonna probably be so bad. A follower's begun dissenting against you? Beefaroni, you wouldn't. I was trying to give you a gift. Here. I'm trying my best here, guys, okay? I have to clean up your poop and I have to go out on little missions. To make myself feel better, I called for a sermon and unlocked the vampiric class of weapons which restores hearts as you kill enemies, which I definitely, definitely needed. But the damage was already done, and nothing could ease my fears about Beefaroni's loyalty. Our trust was broken. When I left the temple, I saw him and Ravioli talking after the sermon, and I just knew that he was spreading lies. What did you just say? Did you tell a joke, or did you tell them that I'm a horrible cult leader? Beefaroni, spill. Spill the beef. From my first and most beloved follower to now one of the most suspicious, my beef with Beefaroni, the beef beef, was beginning to feel very real. However, I could I couldn't let cult drama get in the way of the beautiful community I was trying to build, so I got back to business. All right, let me cook up all the like edible stuff that I have, and then I'm gonna go on a little journey so that hopefully we can get some better food. What began as a Darkwood trip for resources quickly went south when I bumped into Leshy, who said they were ready to end things once and for all. I wasn't entirely sure what that meant, but I was starting to fear that our first big boss battle was fast approaching. I am actually so terrified. As the sun rose on day 11, I'd made a lot of friends in the dark wood. Not only had I saved an adorable deer follower, but I also met this fisherman who gave me the location for his fishing spot at Pilgrim's Passage. And honestly, this was amazing news. Now I had a way to feed my followers substantial meals that weren't just bowls of berries or grass. But the celebration would have to wait because as I anticipated, we quickly entered our first big boss battle with the Bishop Leshy. Upon entering the arena, his followers all sacrificed themselves in his honor, giving him the power to transform into this horrible monster, which I was definitely not expecting. Wow. The battle wasn't too bad at first, and Leshy's attacks were sort of a combination of all the previous mini bosses, so I'd gotten a bit of experience with how to handle them. What the, what the, what the, what the homing missile? Hello? What the heck was that? As the battle continued, he started pulling out some newer moves, which was a little bit scary, but I tried to keep my composure as much as possible, and finally, yes! We did it! For defeating Leshy, our first bishop, we were rewarded with his beating heart. Just, just a whole organ. Are you proud of me? Leshy fell before you like a grain of sand before a time. That's exactly what I was thinking. That Those are the exact words that I had in my mouth. The biggest reward, though, was really just Beefaroni's smiling face when I returned home and filled him in on my victory. Finally, it felt like his skepticism had subsided, but in its place was Eric, our new deer villager who apparently was naturally skeptical. I'm keeping my eye on you, Eric. After almost three whole days away from the cult, there was an abundance of devotion waiting for me, and for all their hard work, I sent my followers off to sleep. This is shaping up to be a very cute little cult. 
That's a weird thing to say. Using all that devotion, I was able to unlock the stone mine as well as the lumber yard, which were essentially regenerating resources for us here at home base. After so much time away, it only seemed right to start off day 13 with a wonderful morning sermon. Good morning. I hope you slept well in your new houses. And I just want to say I appreciate you and I love you and thank you for being in my cult. And to celebrate, I decided to start a new ritual. Or, you know, ritual feels a bit weird. A new family tradition, wherein we threw a big feast to avoid starvation and celebrate the defeat of Leshy. To my surprise, as we wrapped up the ceremony, Pringle ran over and professed to me their love for Eric and requested that I bring flowers back from Darkwood for the purpose of wooing him. So I headed off for another crusade. With Leshy defeated, we'd also unlock the next area to explore, but unfortunately, I had some flowers to pick, so that was put on the back burner for now. Something I didn't expect, though, was that the enemies in Darkwood had now gotten stronger. Unfazed, I entered the dungeon, saved the rabbit and picked 10 flowers, which meant that all I had to do now was survive. Stupidly, I jumped into this random travel portal I found, bringing me directly back to the Leshy battle. Definitely not at all what I wanted, and predictably, I ended up martyred. But you know what? Dying sent me straight home, so joke's on you, Leshy. First thing, I went to deliver the flowers for Eric, but was surprised when Spaghetti and Pringle are friends. Whoa! You sure you want those flowers for Eric still? Dang! Honestly, I realized at this point that I was way too invested in the lives of my followers, so I pulled myself away from the drama to do some more work on home base, unlocking the refinery. And you would not believe it, but by unlocking the refinery, I had also unlocked an outhouse. Blessed be! Guys, guys, come on. You want a place to go poo? You gotta, you gotta praise me. My hope was that Gorp, our newest recruit, would begin his journey at Colt Boy RD as a uh a plumber or something. That would just be fantastic. And honestly, I was obsessed with getting that outhouse. I did not want to pick up poop anymore. So following a motivational morning bonfire, oh, no, 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 no. I made everyone go and pray to raise our devotion in the hopes of reaching our outhouse dreams. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. You have truly done it. We will get you an outhouse. Oh no. Nope, not yet. Back to work, everybody. But with literally three devotion left to get, our you kidding? No, Gip, seriously? You couldn't just chant for like two- Okay, you know what? You know what? I'm leaving. This was actually kind of a good thing though, because with Darkwood finished, I was eager to begin our next adventure in Anura. Things were different right off the bat, and the whole place was filled with aggressive little frogs of all varieties. All right, frog- frog city in here. I really like the mushroom vibes of Anura. I think that the Darkwood was cool, but I love the mushrooms. Not only was the vibe and the foliage nice, but I also ended up finding some pumpkins, an entirely new food source and crop to cultivate. Amazing! Feeling good, I entered the final room, hacking down Hakeet's statue for practice, and then directly after coming face to face with the real thing. And you know what? I'm gonna say it. Leshy was way nicer. Hakeet was acting incredibly rude. Your sins are many, and for that your loyal followers must suffer they shall starve? <gasps> no! No, not SpaghettiO! How could you do that? Get the bath! I will kill you, Hakeet. And all your stupid, stupid little, stupid idiot frogs. With only half health, I faced the first mini boss, Gushin, but ultimately, I was no match. I quickly returned to cult Boy RD worried sick about SpaghettiO and the rest of my dear cultists. My followers are starving. Everybody's starving. Guys, it's gonna be okay. Nope, not bowl of poop, please. Paquette's curse had caused the faith and hunger in Cult Boy RD to plummet, so I quickly cooked up some food and then planted the pumpkin seeds I'd found. But no matter what I did, the faith remained low, so the damage control continued well into the next day. There was some good news, though, because after nearly three weeks without proper plumbing, I was finally able to unlock the outhouse. To construct it, though, I first needed consecrated resources, which required a refinery. I got one constructed in the top right of the cult grounds and had beefaroni start blessing pieces of wood all alone in the corner. I am actually so proud. It's kind of insane. It seemed like the faith had been mostly restored following that afternoon's sermon, and not only that, but I also unlocked a permanent half heart for my dungeon crusades, which would definitely help in the battle with Gushin. Gushin, however, was but a distant thought because first I needed to focus on the poop. Oh, come on, guy. The outhouse is literally- I'm in the process of 
please. We were making progress on the consecrated wood, but still needed four more. So while that was processing, I did some general cult upkeep, building some more farm plots, doing some uh, janitorial work, and then heading out for another trip through Anura. With full health and fervor, plus a positive can-do attitude, I had everything I needed for a good run and was feeling a lot better about my prospects. I made it all the way back to Gushin relatively quickly, and this time around, I was able to avoid the stomp attacks and gradually bring down their health, but with only one heart myself, it was gonna be a close one. But lo and behold, the can-do attitude pulled through, and I was able to defeat Gushin, adding yet another little fella to the family. Oh, it's okay. Come back to my cult. Oh, he looked happy to come back. Yee! I ended this crusade with a bunch of loot and went in for my regular performance review. This time, the one who waits said I needed to be stronger, but to achieve this... Sacrifice a follower to grow your strength and unlock new abilities and weapons? <gasps> I'm not gonna... No, no, escape, escape. I can't do anything but declare it. The doctrine was declared, but what I didn't tell my boss was that I would not under any circumstances sacrifice anyone because I was unreasonably emotionally attached to them all. I returned to my fellow cult burdened with the knowledge that I'd promised to kill one of them. But there wasn't really much I could do about that for now, so I went on with cult business, retrieving the consecrated wood from the refinery and constructing the outhouse at long last. Yes! I don't have to clean up poop anymore! With the promise of increased hygiene standards in Cult Boy RD, I was over the moon and decided to use some of my devotion to unlock and construct an offering statue to potentially get valuable resources from my followers. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot about this new follower! I'm so sorry. I'm gonna name you Kronk. Once I'd welcomed Kronk to the group, I collected my first donation from the statue and harvested our first round of pumpkins, which was very exciting. Although I'd built an outhouse, I was still finding poop everywhere, so I figured maybe if I moved it to a more central location, they'd all be able to find it easier. So yeah, the first thing you see when you enter Colt Boy RD is an outhouse. Just wonderful. While my followers slept, I headed into Darkwood for some more crops, and although I wasn't able to find any, I did buy this fox at a 71% discount, which felt fundamentally wrong, and then rejected this murderous unicorn out of fear that he might kill one of my own. Colt Boyardi has moral standards. It was honestly a very smooth crusade, and after finishing off Witness Agaras with relative ease, I received their eyeball as a reward. I got an eyeball in my pocket dear Liza, and had another chat with the big man. Kindly, the one who waits had built me a new offering chest that I could use to sell things for gold. And with that new source of money, I headed on home to greet our newest recruits. Everyone say hello to Bogus and Hoogle. To welcome them on in, I threw together a quick sermon and also enacted a new doctrine. I'm not murdering a follower. I will- I don't know what ascend means. That just seems like a fancy word for murder. Thank you for your patience though, everybody. And because you've been just such a great audience, uh, we're also going to be having a sacrifice of the flesh! No! 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 No, 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 no! Oh my god. I almost actually, like, pooped myself. I meant to say a feast. Thanks, everybody, for uh, bearing with me. Those technical difficulties, am I right? That miscommunication. I definitely had enough of the temple after that little debacle, but we recovered pretty quickly, and after receiving loyalty rewards from SpaghettiO and Gorp, I got another divine inspiration and unlocked the fertilizer silo. And this meant that we could now have a fully automated farm. Once all my followers had tucked in for the night, I decided to go out and check the new fishing area. I unlocked it so long ago, and then just entirely forgot about it. My eye was immediately drawn to this lighthouse, and inside, I found this little guy freaking out about how the light was starting to grow dimmer. So I took it upon myself to chop down some trees and get the fire going again. Like, guys, the wood was right outside. It wasn't that hard. For my good work, though, this little lighthouse posse pledged their full allegiance to me, which meant another source of free devotion, and I'll take that any day of the week. With that little side quest finished up, I went back to exploring the rest of the area and spoke with the fishermen. Look what the... T I hate that noise. During our mildly disturbing conversation, he made a bit of a deal to exchange fish for rewards, so I got to it. By the end of the day, I'd managed to catch an octopus and a lobster, which I gave to the fisherman before heading home. Whoa. I have no idea what that is, but I really appreciate it. With the exception of our pumpkins, we were still veggie-less, and therefore unable to make the splendid vegetable feast for this random quest, and also feed our villagers. So I entered Darkwood once again in the hopes of finding some. Okay, please let there be a vegetable, just any vegetable, just some kind of what the what? Where are all these little... Oh! There weren't any new veggies, but for some reason, my first impulse was to kill all the grubs and then attack the mother grub. Oh! Don't you dare touch my love! Should I do it? 
I don't understand. Can you give me a vegetable, please? But already, the snail had gone feral. In the end, I decided to spare the innocent veggie grub, ashamed that I had stooped to such lowly violence to attain vegetables. And although I finished the boss off with no problem, it didn't feel all that great. That adventure was, uh, not fruitless, but veggie-less. I set up the stone mine and lumber yard as soon as I got back, but unfortunately, the splendid vegetable feast quest expired, bringing down the cult's faith considerably, so I got a bonfire going. Vegetable medley doesn't exist. Yeah! But I soon realized there were some issues in the cult that a bonfire couldn't fix. I feel my bones creaking and my sight fading? No! Beefaroni is old! I desperately wanted to keep Beefaroni alive to keep him from aging, but I knew deep down he would only be with us for a few more days. Let's dance together one last time. I'm not equipped. Oh, he can't even, like, walk to his bed! I guided Beefaroni to bed, worried these would be our final moments together, and decided not to do any crusading that night. If Beefaroni died while I was away, it would just be too much for me to handle. On the morning of day 24, I saw a bed had collapsed, and thinking it was Beefaroni's, my heart sank, but thankfully, it was just ravioli being dumb. There were a lot of little scares like that, I was just not in the right headspace, so when Pringle came up to me later in the day saying skeptics and heretics were asking to join, I decided to accept them. And this decision, made in my flustered state, was the biggest mistake in my cult leader career. I shouldn't have done that. Remember this dude, the murderous unicorn? Well, I suppose I don't know if it's the same one, but even still, they were just bad, bad news. I don't want this. I don't want this. I considered just leaving them in the void forever and never talking to them, but eventually I took a chance, bestowing them with the name Crinkle and changing their appearance from an evil unicorn to a cute little fishy. Please, I'm begging you, don't tear this cult apart. Crinkle is dissenting. You freaking, I just set you free. Honestly, I was truly afraid of Crinkle and the lies that they would spread. Right out of the gate, they were a pain in my patookus. No, 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 no. Stop it, Crinkle. I'm sad. I'm sad. There's poop. I'm, I'm sad. Crinkle, I'm giving you a bed and I'm going to put it in the furthest corner away from everybody else because I don't trust you and I don't like you. This entire time, I'd been avoiding this, the body pit upgrade, but with Beefaroni's health failing and the threat of a potential murderer named Crinkle, I was afraid we'd be needing one soon. So begrudgingly, I unlocked it. We now have enough for a body pit and I'm really, really sad about it. And I'm going to put it down here where nobody's going to see it right next to where Crinkle sleeps. Shut your mouth, Crinkle. And what began with the introduction of Crinkle led to a slew of stressful follower issues, one of which being ravioli. I've already given everything I own to you. Now I wish to also give my life. Please sacrifice me. No, ravioli. Shut up, Crinkle. I'm having rough time right now. Everything is getting so out of hand. I feel like I'm babysitting children. I just don't know what to do. Well, I did what I do best, which was to run away from my problems and into another crusade. But as I was making my way through the rooms, I ran into an even bigger issue. The bishops. Bow to me or you will regret it. I am not gonna bow to you. You will bow or I will make you. Hey! I had veggies to find, loser! With a big wrench in my veggie finding plans, I grew hopeless, and though I put up a good fight, the next mini boss, Elagos, ultimately ended up defeating me. I arrived home to a staggeringly low amount of faith. Crinkle, what have you been doing? I never should have let Crinkle in. I made a massive error. I made a huge mistake. They all look so angry, and Bisquick is old. Our cult verged on the brink of collapse, so I called an emergency meeting, enacting a new doctrine that would increase devotion generation. My hope was that with enough devotion, we can unlock the prison and lock Crinkle away. And I mean, with Sonic now dissenting too, jail cells were kind of my top priority. I'm gonna put that in the Crinkle corner where the body pit is. But chaos and lawlessness were everywhere in Colt Boyardee. Everybody's screaming. Everybody's screaming. Okay, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. Like, Crinkle was just straight up shrieking. Fortunately, though, he decided to just exile himself, which was a massive relief for me. I am never letting a dissenter into my freaking cult again. In the wake of Crinkle's reign, we still had some cult members being difficult, so I called a sermon first thing the next morning. Today, I would like to talk to you about how Sonic is being a little bit of the worst right now. Somehow, these words moved my dear followers, and at last, the faith was restored. I was feeling absolutely fantastic. Everything was back to normal, Crinkle was gone, but when I least expected expected it. We don't, we don't talk about Sonic anymore. What's going- No! No! Our beloved Beefaroni had passed. I will miss you.
for the rest of time, Beefaroni. Morning and in anguish, I decided enough was enough. It was time for a prison. As I traveled through Darkwood gathering wood for the construction costs, I made my case for Sonic's incarceration. I can say with almost 100% confidence, the reason Beefaroni died is because of stress. Over the people dissenting and saying horrible stuff about me, it just stress, just stress all around. The entire rest of the day was spent chopping down trees, motivated by the thought of Sonic rotting in his little hedgehog jail cell. To cope with my grief, I put myself to work, getting things done around the cult. I tended to the farm, unlocked a healing bay, cooked up some meals, and then cleaned up the poop from said meals. And finally, I constructed our prison. Okay, I'm gonna put the prison down here, and I'm throwing Sonic inside it. Sorry, you deserve this. Now that Sonic was safely behind bars, I felt like I could breathe easy and began another crusade. In the process, I ran into Helob and bought another follower, which meant we were only one follower away from unlocking the next door. Eager to unlock this next area, I immediately entered a Nura once again with the singular goal of getting that last follower. Lucky enough, I was able to find and add this adorable bird to the cult, but all right, we'll take care of you. Bis quick! Died? I was devastated. Not only because our follower count was now unchanged, but also because Bisquick, my beloved, was dead. I could, I could sincerely cry. I continued on my crusade, enraged and in grief, but the loss of Bisquick was too much, and I died. I'm just so sad. Rushing back to the cult, I returned to Bisquick, lifeless on the ground, but it brought me great solace to know that he died doing what he loved, praising me. Instead of harvesting his meat, which uh, gross. I prepared him for burial and carried him to his final resting site. But Colt Boy RD is an ever-evolving community, and honestly, knowing that Bisquick had joined Beefaroni in the afterlife brought me some peace. Uplifted, I welcomed Bunger and Ace to the cult and continued on with my cult leader duties. I made breakfast for everyone, re-educated Sonic for a bit because everyone deserves a second chance, and then, with everyone's help, unlocked Silk Cradle, the next dungeon. And boy, it was a wild ride. There were little spiders and spiders spider eggs and spiders that drop from the sky, and a very big spider named Shamura, who was our next bishop after Haket. He told me a story of how the one who waits had betrayed the other four bishops, and just as things were looking up, can you fathom such betrayal, lamb? of your own turned against you. Would you like to find out? Not really. No, not Bunger. I just got him. No, 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 no. Under some sort of spell, Bunger started attacking me with a sword. I'm not killing Bunger. You can't make me. I ran in circles for a very long time, but deep down, I knew I was only avoiding the inevitable truth. Oh, maybe I have to. Please don't make me. Bunger has died. Yet another crushing defeat for Colt Boy RD. Not only were our numbers plummeting, but I was forced to kill one of my own for the first time. Obviously, Bunger could never be replaced, but I continued on my quest to recruit more followers and ended up getting this ant? Beetle? I, I have no idea what this guy is. I think the game felt bad that I was getting hit with so many L's because at long last, I opened a loot chest and got a new veggie. Did I just get cauliflower? Honestly, obtaining this cauliflower gave me so much motivation going into the boss fight, but it was a little bit horrifying. What is that? Focalor. I did not like Focalor. For one, they'd give birth to a bunch of spider babies and then web shoot away, which was mildly gross. Isn't that just amazing? Uh-oh, I am in danger. It felt like my combat had really improved though, because I was somehow able to keep my health up, sneaking in little flurries of attacks until... Oh, I did it. Yes. I sent little Focalor home and then went back myself. Sonic's re-education program continued the next day and he was actually nearly back to his normal, non-dissenting self. But it wasn't long before things started to spiral again. Right after I welcomed Skippy to the cult, Ace got sick and was literally on the verge of death. The cherry on top was that SpaghettiO was now dissenting and... Excuse me, leader. I just wanted to say that I love you. Okay, thank you, Pringle. I'm trying to clean up the vomit you're standing on. The prison strategy really seemed to work last time around, so I built another prison for SpaghettiO. And in you go. Shortly after, I welcomed Squirtle to the squad and assigned them to refinery duty so that we could start collecting consecrated materials for the healing bay, but then... <gasps> no! Ravioli is dead? I've lost everybody. I am devastated. If it was any consolation, my farm was fully functional and not terrible to look at, but that didn't actually matter at all because I literally had no food to cook. Honestly, the cult was very much on the brink of starvation, so after a quick uplifting sermon, hello everybody, please stop dying, that is all, I headed to Pilgrim's Passage to do some fishing. As soon as I arrived, I got a bit distracted 
by this guy asking me for fish, so I decided to give him a salmon, and in return, he gave me the final shard of a holy talisman I'd been collecting. This would allow me to unlock new fleeces and abilities. Very cool. Excited about this little gift, I totally forgot that I was here to get food for the cult, because I literally caught a single octopus and then returned home. So maybe everyone was slightly starving, but on the bright side, I continued re-educating our imprisoned followers and was finally able to fully reform and free Sonic. Okay, Ace is still dying, which is concerning. By this time, I had the healing base set down to hopefully remedy that, but by the time I fully constructed it, Ace was completely fine, so that was a bit of a waste. At this point, we were about a third of the way through, and it felt like a good time to start buckling down and really starting to build up the cult's infrastructure. So I sold a bunch of stuff and got a stone mine going, as well as a harvest totem to increase the growth of my crops. Then to top it all off, I added some decorations and did a little bit of clothes shopping. Ooh, I don't even know what to get. I went with the fleece of fragile fortitude and look at me in my new outfit. It's so cute. Following one more re-education session with SpaghettiO, they finally returned to normal, so I set them free and then entered Silk Cradle once again where I came across Shamak for the first time. She showed me all the relics I'd collected thus far that could be used for special attacks and abilities, which seemed incredibly useful. We also managed to get seeds to grow beetroots from a chest as well as some other fun items. Ooh, a toe. I'll take it. I entered battle with Vafar armed with a toe, but unfortunately the toe could not save me and I very quickly died. As was the norm these days when I returned home, the place was an utter chaos. To begin with, Gorp was dissenting, so I immediately sent them to jail. And our followers do not believe in us, and they are pooping everywhere. We need to have a talk, everybody. It was truly a dire situation. Like, not only did I hold a feast, but I also directly followed that up with a bonfire ritual in the hopes that I could raise their hunger and faith. Exhausted from all that work, I sat down for a moment with myself to just enjoy a nutritious meal of grassy gruel. Oh, why did I eat that? And then, Bogus came up to me accusing Hoogle of thievery and demanding justice. At this point, I was so tired that I just sent him off to prison. Once I'd given a lovely sermon the next morning, I headed straight back to Inura, saving this little capybara stuck to a mushroom. I also ended up dying once again to Elagos, but that wasn't even the worst part, because when I returned... Where? Oh no! Sonic! At this point, so many of our followers were dying that it felt necessary to build a crypt just to store them all in. So I plopped one down and then carried him over before welcoming Tinkle, our newest recruit. I like Tinkle. I hope I don't lose him. Okay, I need to go and explore. And I promise you Kronk is gonna die while I'm gone. Kronk freaking died. Well, at least I got to be here for it, I guess. It really felt like a new follower was dying every day, though, and I was starting to get extremely concerned. Oh, SpaghettiOs old. And I may be an adorable cult leader with a magical little hat, but I can't resurrect the dead. At least I, I don't think so. So my only option was to head out on more crusades to recruit followers and just hope that things don't fall apart anymore while I'm gone. Precious bean, get in the hole. My goal this time around was to not get killed by Eligos, but that plan was not going very well. <gasps> what? No, why can't I beat this guy? <laughs> Yet again, I lost, but at least I got honk. I like honk. In an effort to curb the unfortunate byproducts of having poop lying all over the place, I decided to unlock the janitor station and also built up another outhouse for good measure. I don't know why poop has been such a consistent problem for us, but I would love for it to stop. Once the poop was handled, I decided to try one last time to beat Eligos. I don't know why it was so hard. And armed with a toe from Shamak, I was confident I'd be able to beat them this time. I saved this little bison along the way and then came face to face with Eligos for the final time and this battle went way better. I did it! Yes! <laughs> Finally, that took way too long. Despite the excitement of our latest victory, beating more mini bosses and saving more followers just means more poop and more responsibilities, so pretty much all my free time these days was filled up. After I'd shoveled some poop, re-educated Gorp, and welcomed both Pumpernickel and Trubbish to the cult, I hosted a sermon to get everyone acquainted. <gasps> Perform a ritual you can marry one of your followers? Oh, who do I marry? Everybody's old. Okay. I'm gonna marry Tinkle. Yay! Oh, so cute! And just like that, I'm, I'm married. In what felt like an instant, and honestly pretty much was. I was a married lamb. You can marry as many followers as you like. It's your cult after all. Oh, okay. I'll wait until he's dead to remarry. To celebrate our union, I decided to decorate the cult a little bit more. Liven the place up. I put
put down some paths to connect the different areas, as well as some flower wreaths lining the back to bring a pop of color. Although I'm now Tinkle's partner, I am first and foremost a cult leader, so I spent the rest of the night farming and harvested crops all the way into the next morning. With all the materials I'd gathered overnight, I was also finally able to build a janitor station, which I put next to the outhouses. At long last, the excrement of my followers is no longer under my purview. My poo view, one could say. Happy with my married and poopless life, I headed to the dungeons, finding Halab with a little froggy in his web. Oh so cute. I want him. My next crusade continued on into the 43rd day where I came face to face with Zipar. And I don't know what happened last time, but for some reason, they were way easier than Eligos. First try, baby. Oh, he looks like a meatball. I love him. I returned home once again victorious, but to some troubling rumors. Rumor has it that Skippy is a spy sent by an enemy cult to undermine your great power. I agreed to ask Skippy about it and figure out what was going on, but as I did so... Hello. Oh, Pringle freaking died. Oh my god. Okay, Skippy, hold on. What's going on here? What a beautiful day in paradise. Might I say you look extra glorious today. Not gonna lie, Skippy seemed fine to me. So I went on with business, carrying Pringle's body to the crypt and officially welcoming Squinkle and Meatball to the cult. Oh my god, Pringle's just died dead here. Yeah, it turns out I'd actually carried SpaghettiO's body to the crypt earlier. So don't know when he died or how long that had been sitting there out in the open. Grateful for all the work my cultists had done and apologetic for leaving all these corpses around, I declared the holy day ritual, which gave my followers an entire day of well-deserved rest while I went off to continue progressing through the Anura dungeon. Very quickly, I came face to face again with Heket. I will not suffer the same fate as Leshy. Find me in my temple. You will join your kin in the slaughter. No, 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 no. Yeah, another one down. It was really not a great week for Colt Boyardee. I was able to save this pangolin before being martyred, but I realized I could not be away from home for long these days because I got back just in time to see... No. Eric dying of old age. All of them are dying. To make things worse, Faith was at an all-time low and freaking Hoogle was dissenting, so I threw him in jail. I'm gonna be real, the cult was falling apart, so I decided to gather everyone in the temple and hosted a funeral for Eric. In celebrating his life, we were able to free his soul and send him off into the afterlife to join his other fallen friends. It was a beautiful ceremony. Although everyone was aging, I needed to risk going back to Anura because the only thing we had left to accomplish there was defeating Hakeem. Before going in, I freed this little horse from Halab for good luck and repopulation, and then faced our second bishop. Oh boy. With a ton of extra hearts, I managed to get Hiket below half health. At one point, he like jumped into the stratosphere and then landed and sent a bunch of tongues all about, but I just tanked it and carried on. Come on. <laughs> Go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Now that Hiket was defeated and Anura was cleared, it was time yet again for a performance review from the one who waits. Your merciless crusade against the old faith warms my cold, unbeating heart. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Thanks, boss. I return to Colt Boy RD a hero. Hi, guys. Party time. <laughs> but it wasn't all good news because as we were wrapping up for the night... Oh. Oh, crud. I mean, it was fine, though, because Gorp had been a dissenting pain in my butt, and besides, we now had Monty and Kopi to welcome in as well. And despite the string of misfortunes we'd been enduring recently, we were starting to once again make good progress, seeing as we'd finally gathered enough devotion to get our next big upgrade. Cult 3, Cult 3, Cult 3. With a cult upgrade comes better cult amenities, and this time I was thinking long term. I had my eye on the grand shelters, which never collapse and generate devotion while my followers sleep. They were super expensive, but I was getting pretty tired of repairing collapsed shelters and wanted my followers to have a nice place to sleep. So I began constructing a few of them and got some meals cooking up. As I was doing so, Monty came up to me and told me he'd always wanted to eat poop, and I didn't want to hold any of my followers back from achieving their dreams, so I prepared him a bowl and he immediately got sick. Like, are you happy you did that? By this point, I'd reached my social limit and made the trek back to the dungeon and with the help of my followers, unlocked the next area, Anchor Deep. Immediately after entering, I came face to face with Kalamari himself. I shall enjoy watching your cult rot from the inside, a disease upon them. Oh, not Skippy. I, I... I don't feel so good. Oh, no. I wanted nothing more than to return home and care for Skippy, but I pressed onward, and right as I was recruiting our next follower... Oh. 
Okay, Hoogle died. Fantastic. Pushing through the grief, I somehow made it to the first mini boss stage where I met Salios, and although it was our first encounter, I won pretty easily and welcomed them to the family. Right when I got home, I rushed to Skippy's side and made sure they received proper medical attention before saying one final goodbye to Hoogle. That evening, I gathered everyone at the temple and unlocked a new crown ability that allowed me to teleport back to base during crusades, which would definitely come in handy in the future. As the sun set and my followers headed to bed, I continued working, tending to the farm and unlocking cult level 4, our final level of upgrades. With all the amenities, doctrines, and sanitary measures now in place at Cult Boy RD, I was positive that Cinema Roll and Teriyaki would be living large. It really seemed like pleasing the new recruits would be an uphill battle though, because on the morning of day 52, Teriyaki told me the base was an eyesore. <laughs> Only slightly insulting. I decided to take it as constructive criticism and agreed to add some more decorations. Primarily, I placed stone walls along the main paths, and I mean, the decor was really starting to fall into place. Traditionally though, it feels like every success in the cult is followed by devastation, and this case was no different. While on a crusade exploring through Anchor Deep, I received the unsettling news that Tinkle had reached old age. Tinkle? Not my beautiful wife. If Tinkle dies, I will be so upset. Uh-oh. Nothing humbles quite like disease. I cast a plague upon your cult. You already tried this, buddy. Oh, like every- Oh, okay. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you. Thanks so much. There was also a bit of sickness going around due to Calamar's curse, but I kept moving forward, making progress in Anchor Deep, and saving any new followers I bumped into. Join the cult. There's a bit There's a bit of a plague right now, but it'll be okay. Motivated to get home and see Tinkle, my love, I swiftly defeated Habarim and made my way back. Things had not been going well in my absence, and pretty much everybody was sick at this point. The good thing, though, was that I built a healing bay all that time ago, and while it felt like a waste at the time, it was genuinely the savior of our entire cult. With the help of the healing bay, I was able to heal most of our followers and then welcomed our two newest members, Hippo and Spike. Having endured the plague and added a bunch of new devoted followers, Cult Boy RD was certifiably thriving. The next afternoon, I unlocked Lumberyard Level 2 to make up for our shortage of wood and then started the construction of another refinery. We had a lot of buildings we'd be setting down in the weeks to come, and most of them required consecrated resources. Following a lovely family dinner, Kopi told told me they'd lost a friend in Anura, so I agreed to go find them and headed back through the second door. It was honestly good to head back through Anura though, because I was able to stock up on some pumpkin seeds before stumbling across Kopi's friend stuck to a mushroom. I defeated all the enemies holding them captive, and with that task done, I decided to test out my new ability and whistled home. Didn't want to put my pumpkins on the line. When I got back, I saw that Skippy had passed from old age, but I was becoming increasingly worried, knowing that Tinkle's time would be coming soon. At the very least, Kopi was happy to have their friend back, who I named Bonk. But to de-stress, I took a trip to Pilgrim's Passage and did a bit of fishing. I managed to catch a crab, which I gave the fisherman, and in return, he gave me yet another shard. Quickly though, I realized the fishing wasn't doing anything for me, but wasting precious final moments I could be spending with my love. So I returned home. Oh, Tinkle, smooch, our first kiss. Oh no, please don't die, Tinkle. I'll dance for you, my love. No, Meatball, excuse me, excuse me. I figured maybe I was overreacting. Like, our cult was a well-oiled machine. I had followers generating devotion, gathering resources, tending to crops. Everything was perfect. But the perfection meant nothing to me as my greatest fears came to fruition. <gasps> Tinkle! No! My sweet wife! Everybody, out of the way! Devastated, I wrapped Tinkle up and carried them to what would be their final resting place. I'm so sad. Though Tinkle was gone, I knew I had to carry on, constructing a new farm surrounded by friends and followers. And as our final day with Tinkle drew to an end, the day of our first kiss, our first dance, the first death of a spouse, I built a flower arch in their memory. In recognition of my terrible loss, I decided to declare day 57 a time of mourning and gave everyone the day off. For me, the work didn't stop though, and I went on another crusade into Anchor Deep, where I met Plimbo, an antiquities dealer. While rested the next day, my followers followers helped me to expand the farm before I headed into the temple and declared our next doctrine. This doctrine would allow me to appoint a tax enforcer to collect gold from my cultists, and shockingly everyone seemed really happy about this new policy. <laughs> everyone loves taxes. I decided to appoint Ace as my first tax collector. Oh, he even has a little hat. But as much as I tried, progress couldn't fill the Tinkle-sized hole in my heart. I think I should marry somebody else. I don't know who, but Tinkle's dead and I'm sad and lonely. Ultimately, I chose to marry Bonk, our newest recruit because
because they wouldn't be dying for a very long time, and I've always wanted a spouse named Bonk, so just like last time, we had a small ceremony with everyone in attendance. Happily married, I continued on with my farming duties and remembered that Teriyaki had requested flowers from the Darkwood Dungeon, so I set off to find some. But as I was leaving, no, not my tax collector. Ace had fallen ill. It turns out I also needed the camellia flowers to use the healing bay, so I assigned him to bed rest and ventured into the Darkwood. I collected as many flowers as I could, which was pretty much only enough to give teriyaki, but I wanted to try and start growing the flowers here in the cult so we wouldn't have to go out on expeditions to find them anymore. In that same vein, I unlocked Farming Station 2. With this upgrade, followers could now harvest crops in addition to watering and planting them, which would allow us to completely automate our crops. The cult was coming along very nicely, and I decided to do a bit more decorating the next day. I placed stone paths around the farm as well as some grass walls, but despite how beautiful the area was turning out, oh crud. Our followers were still dying a little bit. The thing though, I feel it's important to specify that they're all dying of old age, not like the plague or something, which speaks to the robust infrastructure of Colt Boyardee, I'd say. Once all my followers had gone off to sleep, I headed back into Anchor Deep, saving the seahorse before my untimely demise. Upon my return, I welcomed Bork into the cult and declared a new doctrine which allowed me to distribute gold to my followers for increased loyalty and faith. And I know it seems like I'm losing money, but I basically have my tax collector taking all that gold back, so it's free loyalty. All of day 64 was spent going on, you guessed it, another crusade. And this time I took down Balzabub with full health. Is it Balzabub? Is it Balzibub? Be this time I took down Beezlebub guy with full health. I must say though, a bit of an L to return home to my tax collector dead on the ground, especially after I just enacted the doctrine to pay my followers. <laughs> yeah, now I'm just genuinely losing money. After yeeting Ace into the crypt, I welcomed Mustard to the gang. With Balzabub defeated and Mustard recruited, we had finally unlocked the battle with our third bishop. In preparation, I spent the next couple days tending to the farm, keeping my followers fed, and maintaining faith in the cult before setting out to Anchor Deep once again. It was a long and harrowing journey, but with the acquisition of a new elephant follower, we'd arrived at the arena to fight Kalamar. Unfortunately, he was in a particularly aggressive mood that day, and I died with little hope for victory. It had been a long crusade, lasting almost three whole days, and as I expected, I returned home to utter chaos. Oh my god, what happened while I left, you people? Two of you died, one of you is dissenting. Immediately, I jumped into damage control mode, delivering a sermon, declaring a new doctrine, and announcing a holiday to raise cult morale. Quickly, things settled down a bit, and with the cult in a less frenzied state, I went to welcome Spork and, uh, dealt with the dead bodies. As we began day 72, I made the decision to expand the outreach of Colt Boyardee by building a missionary. This would allow me to send followers on missions to gather resources, new followers, or money. Spork was a bit of a newbie, so as initiation, I sent him on a mission to gather some meat. And I mean, an 80% chance of survival is pretty good, but a 20% chance of dying a gruesome, terrible death is also quite high. First thing the next morning, I found that Monty had passed. My sweet little poop eater, rest in peace. In his honor, I cooked up some actually edible meals and then supervised the refineries for a bit. In the middle of this, Teriyaki ran up to me and asked to take up the mantle and become our next tax collector. It had been a while since Ace had died and I was for sure losing money without one, so I agreed, heading to the temple to formally elect them. I also just really wanted to see him in a funny little top hat and let me say, he looked dashing. It was almost three quarters of the way through our 100 days and I've gotta say, I was extremely tired of having to cook for my followers. So I constructed a kitchen and hired Crockerock as the cult chef to prepare meals for everyone while I spent my days exploring the dungeons. For some reason, I was having quite a lot of trouble with defeating Kalamar and Anchor Deep, so for practice, I decided to go on a crusade through Silk Cradle instead. I ended up making it all the way to the second boss of the dungeon, Vafar, who I beat with no issue. And after yet another successful crusade, I thought it was time for another meeting with the big man, but instead of the one who waits, I stumbled across, uh, so thou art the creature causing the ether of this world to ripple and warp. Continue in this fashion and we shall meet again, hence. <laughs> wow.
Wow. Who is that cutie? After that very odd encounter, I returned to see Cinema Roll gone. Honestly, it felt like going on a little stroll to the crypt was just a post-crusade routine at this point. Once we'd held a funeral for Cinema Roll, I met up with Spork, who'd somehow managed to find a massive amount of meat. Oh my gosh. Fantastic job. And I mean, with so much good food to go around, I was pleased to welcome our three new followers to the cult. This elephant, who I named Tinkle in honor of my late spouse, Hater Tot, the bear, and Uva. Now that we'd recruited a bunch more followers and built up more facilities, I thought it'd be a good idea to do some more work on the decorations. I continued on my stone wall idea and moved the kitchen to a more centralized spot, placing wooden planks to set the cooking area apart. I also laid down some forest pathing around and hay flooring to mark the sleeping area. Though it wasn't that much work, I feel like the paths really pulled everything together and I wanted to continue recruiting followers so we could get more devotion, money, and other materials to keep building up the cult. So I sent Crockerock on a mission to bring back some followers. Would they even survive with a 30% chance of dying? Who knows, but at least I don't have to deal with all the recruiting on my own anymore. At this point, I still wasn't quite ready to retry the Colomar fight in Anchor Deep, so instead, I continued on in Silk Cradle and came face to face with Shamura, the eldest bishop. Unfortunately, they summoned my own followers, Spork and Bonk, to attack me, which is, first of all, unoriginal, but second of all, very upsetting. Left with no choice, I killed them both, but I found beat seeds, so that was nice, I guess. Having to kill my own followers really threw me off my game. Like, I didn't even reach the next boss fight, but it was overall just a really terrible day for Colt Boy RD. On top of the two we had lost in the dungeon, we had also lost two more of old age. With our numbers dwindling and my stress increasing, I realized I desperately needed a break, so I traveled to Smuggler's Sanctuary and gave our old buddy Plimbo a visit. Plimbo had a handful of tarot cards for sale, and the retail therapy did make me feel a bit better, I will say. Not only that, but when I returned home, I randomly got a fun new badger follower named Pubretre? Yeah, that was just not great, so I renamed him Porpoise. With so many followers lost, I knew I needed to go out on another expedition, so once again, I headed into Anchor Deep. Slicing my way through each room, I finally arrived at the Kalamar fight once again, and I was doing a lot better this time around, evading attacks and slowly knocking him down to half health. Honestly, I was pretty confident I had it in the bag, but with half a heart left, Hello! I was so close, but just fell short. I won't deny I was furious, but the trip wasn't a total bust because along the way, I'd managed to rescue Nessie, Ravioli II, and a chicken named Nugget. Still, I just couldn't figure out why the Kalamar fight was giving me so much trouble. I figured my issue might be connected to my tarot deck and the power-ups I was able to get before I even reached the arena. After all, the more hearts I could retain and attack upgrades I could collect, the easier the fight would be. So I went straight to Pilgrim's Passage and bought a couple more cards, which would hopefully help throughout my crusades. Hopeful in this plan, I just went for it and re-entered Anchor Deep for what honestly felt like the millionth time. By the next day, I'd made my way through the dungeon and back to Kalamar, and although the battle started off well, I didn't want to get ahead of myself. I thought that last time too, you know? But with only a single heart remaining... Gah! Yes! Yes! Oh my god, barely... I had defeated Kalamar. Another order of business I had to attend to was unlocking the morgue, which would allow followers to collect dead bodies for me while I was gone. This way, I won't have to return home every day to a new follower just laying on the ground. And while placing down some more stone walls to frame the base, Nugget came up to me with a proposal for marriage, like, like an actual proposal. Together, we headed to the temple, and soon enough, Nugget and I were officially married. Wait, oh my gosh. I just realized I killed my last spouse and silk cradle. Wow, yikes. Oh, yeah. Instead of a honeymoon, I embarked on another journey through Silk Cradle, and by day 86, I'd made it to the battle with Horus, our third boss. After absolutely decimating them on the first try, I headed back home and saw that Bork had returned from his mission with five beetroot seeds. Pretty pitiful, but thank you anyway, at least he came back alive. And speaking of coming home alive, with Horus defeated, we only had one more trial left in Silk Cradle, our battle with Shamura, the final bishop. I made my way back through the dungeon in anticipation of our biggest battle yet, and after two whole days of crusading, we had finally made it to the battle with Shimura, who was actually quite gross looking. I got some good hits in and did a decent amount of damage, but Shimura was just too strong. I figured maybe it was just a fluke and tried again the next day, making it to the arena with practically full health. But it turns out that having full health didn't really do all that much for me. I'm rolling like a maniac of oh, my life. Oh, no, no. 
not the random, the random fireball. Okay, not a fluke. Shimura was kind of hard. I was pretty confident that if I could just get lucky with the attack RNG and stay focused, I would be able to get the job done. So I headed back into Silk Cradle the next day, saved this raccoon, and started up the fight once again. I will say it did not go well. I got absolutely stomped on. And what's worse than that, every time I lost a fight with Shimura, I was losing a whole boatload of faith from my followers. Like when I got home on day 94, there was literally zero faith. I figured maybe everyone was a little hangry, so I cooked up some lunches and delivered a quick but inspiring sermon. With full tummies, their faith in me restored, and the addition of Rocky to the cult, I got everyone safely in bed and then shifted my focus back to Silk Cradle. After a two-day long expedition back through the dungeon, ready to face Shimura, I, uh... Well, I got donked in the head with a big sword. Never even got a chance. But I kept trying and headed back in on day 97, spending all of the next day fighting and trekking through each room until on the morning of day 99 exactly, I had reached Shimura once more. This was our last chance and I was as determined as ever to kill this dumb spider. And after an incredibly long and incredibly tense battle, oh my gosh yes finally we had done it we had defeated shimura the last bishop with barely any time to waste and with that we were called in for another meeting with the one who waits the time has come to free me you shall have the honor of returning the red crown to its true bearer you shall lay down your life and return to me what is mine but it cannot be done here the final gate awaits hurry now the time is at hand i'm not giving this thing over you kidding me my kids are at home i shrugged off that whole confrontation and returned home to a little welcome party from all my adoring followers and after welcoming trash to the family i decided to celebrate our success in defeating the bishops with another holiday with shimura defeated i had finally unlocked the final gate the gate way. And with the deck of tarot cards, weapons, upgrades, and buffs that I'd been collecting, I was ready to face our final challenge. So I walked up to the door and... Oh... Oh, shoot, I don't have enough followers. All right, well, day 100, but come on now. I had to defeat the one who waits and make sure that Colt Boy RD would always be a beautiful safe haven long after I was gone. Our priority now was to increase our follower numbers, so I headed into Darkwood, the easiest of the dungeons, and brought home a whole gaggle of new followers. There was Archie, Eric II, Scrunkle, Toot, and Sport, but we were still somehow five short. For the entirety of the next couple days, I continuously went through the Darkwood dungeon over and over and over again, collecting as many followers as I could. And with the addition of Judy Hops, Buggy, Wing, Carl, and Joe, <laughs> sorry, what are all these names? We had finally reached the 20 followers that we needed. Following a quick pep rally at the temple, I headed to the gateway for our final showdown. Oh, cuties. My kids, my children, I rise. Somehow I had entered some sort of ethereal plane with a huge selection of weapons to choose from. I decided to go for a Bane Dagger and a Freezing Curse and headed into the arena to face the one who waits. Oh boy. Finally, I will be free. Approach Vessel and lay your life down at my feet. No, my babies. How dare you? How, da how do I attack? Kneel to be sacrificed. No way. Let go of my children. Ball was the first of his cronies to attack. And honestly, I did quite well. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Oi, oi, oi. Okay, okay, Ball, you're dead. Next up was aim. And I'm gonna be real. I thought I'd be given the chance to heal or something before just diving back into it. So I was not incredibly prepared. And well, yeah, all right. Oh, these freaking ring of fire. The ring of... Ugh. All right, gang, you know the ritual. Once again, I faced off against Ball, this time making sure to preserve my health. So when I faced off with AIM, I had almost full hearts and a decent amount of fervor. This fight went smoothly, if I do say so myself. But after defeating AIM, well, Otto, here's something I, I'll say. I didn't expect you to just stand up. And this fight was not going to be easy. First of all, he could teleport. But it also involved avoiding fireballs and a whole bunch of shapes and speeds. And well, instead of describing it to you, I'll just show you this little compilation of the various noises I made throughout this battle. Okay, so, so son of a nutcracker, what the heck? Okay, 
unfazed. I entered the fight again, and you know, thinking about it now, my 20 beloved followers have been captured, imprisoned, released, and then captured again like three times in a row. I am so sorry, you guys. Once again, I defeated Ball and Aim, and despite the spiked chains and balls of fire, I managed to keep my health up and absolutely walloped the one who waits. Got it. I did it, but I had a feeling this wasn't the end. Oh my god, it's Omega Flowey. No! No! Unhand them! Oh my god, it's the... It's your eyeballs. They... Okay. I started whacking at those things. Guys, I'm gonna pull it out for us, okay? We'll be home. I'll make us some superb veggie meals or whatever. With one eye down and soon two, it was down to the final eyeball. And let me just say, I was playing out of my mind. I was dodging. I was weaving. And at long last, I managed to defeat the third eye and went in for the final kill. Oh, 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 wait, did I do it? Wait, the bear? Did we? Oh, do you want to join the cult, buddy? Oh, what a cutie. You have supplanted me. A vessel no more. Instead, a crown-bearing deity. Damned lamb. I am at your mercy. Are you to be a vengeful false idol or a merciful coward? I'll spare you. You're cutie. You weak, sniveling, foul thing. You... Wait! Wait! No, it's okay. Join the cult. You'll, I'll, I'll feed you. I'll give you a house and you'll be happy and it'll be fine. My babies! My babies! Hello! Oh, I love you guys so much. Let's go home, okay? I returned to our beloved cult boy RD to find the one who waits awaiting his indoctrination. I felt it would be best to keep his name as is, just so no one ever forgets that one time he tried to, uh, kill us all. The addition of his wimpy little sleeping bag was the final finishing touch to our wondrous cult. And oh my my gosh, this was one of the most amazing action-packed 100 days I've ever played through. Not only did we beat the entire game, but with our temple, the farm, the sleeping quarters, the outhouses, and our little graveyard all in place, we managed to create a beautiful and thriving community over the course of these days, and I'm honestly so proud of it. I mean, finally, we've made ourselves a proper cult. Well, that is all I have for you today, but I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, feel free to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. I would absolutely love to have you here. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Bye!